Tasty. And now, and now, here he is. Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. We had a call from a listener named Cindy. We were talking about something totally else. We finally got into a conversation about uh, a theory of mine that I have discussed uh, with various friends of mine who happen to be black. And um, I'm wondering um, if you agree or disagree with this. It all came up in this conversation with Cindy. You're wondering why there's so many white girls in Seattle that are single moms. Yeah. It's because all the black guys date white girls. That's why there's so many single white moms in Seattle. What does that have to do with anything? Because you're stating that you're surprised about there's so many white girls in our... You're telling me that black women can't get knocked up because the black guys are busy knocking up white girls? Not that they can't, but I'm saying the majority of them are dating white girls. Just to answer to your question, because you're kind of wondering why. Mm, I don't know if I buy that. Have you been to Seattle lately? Have I been what lately? To Seattle lately? Oh, uh, yes, uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Okay. So I noticed most white girls, their kids, I would say 75% are half black. You say say most white girls are seventy five percent half black? Is that what you just said? No, their children are seventy. All oh, their children are half black. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, I I have a theory on that, but this will uh, this of course will be explosive. Do you want do you want my theory on that? You can uh, sure. comment on this if you want to. Okay. I love it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you straight. Okay. okay. Give it to me. All right. Seattle is full of fat white chicks. With big asses. Okay. Uh, that the brothers uh, really like. And uh, let's be honest about this. There's, there's a lot of guys. Let, there's, like a, there's like a pecking order. Okay. And here's how the pecking order goes. Okay. <laughs> now, for black. The white rich guy that is successful gets a skinny white girl with blonde hair. Right. That's the, well, that's the top. I was going to start at the bottom and work <laughs> up. We'll start at the top and work down. Okay. And okay. I say the top and bottom, I don't say one's better than the other. I'm just talking about where people want to be on the food chain and where they are. Okay? Now, if you start at the bottom of the food chain, you've got the brother who cannot afford to pay the rent. Uh, okay. his, wa- his wife is a fat black woman who pays his bills. That's the bottom of the food chain. Okay? Okay. Now, you have a black man who is moderately professional. Maybe he makes thirty-five, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year. Mm-hmm. He tries to move up. He'd like to move up to the skinny white girl like Tiger Woods got, but he can't afford that. So what he does is he goes to the fat white girl. Because that's, that's kind of like moving up. That's like getting a Lexus ES300. You want the LS430, <laughs> but you can't afford that. Maybe you get the Toyota Camry or something. You know what I'm saying? But you, you know what you want. You just can't get to that level. All right. Exactly. Then you've got the black man who makes six figures, okay? Okay. He gets the average-looking white girl. And you got the black man who makes more than six figures. You you got your basic fullbacks, uh, centers in the NBA, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. They can get any white women they want. O.J. Yeah. Simpson, you know what I'm talking about. I agree 100 percent on this. I, I know, know you do. You see, and you know what? All the I want to tell you something. The white people listen to this show. Are like I can't believe they're saying that. That's so offensive. Black people know where it's at. We're real with it. We know. You know that what I just said is true. You're right. Now do you? think that what I said to Cindy is true. Tom like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The radio woman on the radio getting the same ratings that you're getting. She doesn't serve to get paid the same. I'm not talking. Well, put it this way. No woman gets the ratings I get. The Tom Likas Show. All right, the Tom Likas Show from Los Angeles. 1-800-5800-TOM. All right. In a call... With a listener named Cindy, we talked about what I see as a caste system that exists. 
for black men and the kind of women they want at various stages in their lives, various economic classes. And um, we'll see if there's any truth in this. Royal on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Tom, how you doing, my man? Okay, Royal. All right, first time, long time. Uh-huh. Right on. Hey, I'm a black man uh, in this, making the six figures, mm -hmm. and I agree absolutely 100% with what you're saying. Uh-huh. It, it's the truth. You understand that what I said to the caller is true. You know, all the white people out there are cringing, going, you can't say that. The black people are going to get all upset. You can't say that. It's true. Black people know this better than anybody. Well, you know, uh, I mean, speaking the truth shouldn't be a, shouldn't be a crime. I'm, I'm not afraid to speak the truth. I'll say anything about anyone if it's true. I hear that, brother. But uh, let me tell you, yeah, they, they, that is true about Washington, uh, about the single single mothers. Yeah. Um, it's like you say, a lot of the a lot of the white women do have mixed children, but I mean, that's mostly like you say, it's the fat women that uh, you know the white, the rich, successful white men don't want. Right. Exactly. So you know they. They pick up on the brothers, and, you know, the brothers are looking for, you know, the girls with the back. So, mm -hmm. um, basically, that's that's how that turns out. Now, you know, you don't see too many fine-looking, uh, thin white women in the Seattle area. Uh-huh. Uh, as far as, like, the really hot-looking single mothers, yeah. you don't see too many of those. No, you, well, you really don't. Well, that's because uh, the ones that you do see... Are the big fat ones that might have the mixed <laughs> mixed children, half white, half black. <laughs> well, you right on the money, man. I mean, I mean, the truth the truth may hurt, but then it's there, you know. Absolutely. So, uh, by the way, how many? And I think about this one too. Okay, and I've spent a lot of time out in the community, Seattle, L.A., both. How many black women do you see with mixed race children? N uh, none. <laughs> well, you know. It's like I always say, though, Tom, there's a flip side to that, too. You do see a lot of fine black women with a, with a successful white man. Absolutely you do. Now, that's the, that's the flip side of the coin. Now, um, like I was telling Dino earlier, me, myself, uh, my wife is not black. She is actually mixed. Mm -hmm. She looks damn good. Uh -huh. Now, it didn't used to be that way when I, when I didn't make that much money. Of course. So I kept trading up. You kept trading up. You kept moving up the food chain. Moving up the food chain. And, and if you ever move into that six-figure category, the seven-figure category, the, the sky's the limit. You can get any woman you want. Well, I can't, I, I can't see that far. I mean, I, I know you're there, Tom, but uh, I, me, me, myself, I can't see myself there yet. So, Well, there's, always, there's time, Royal, so don't give in. Oh, I'm not you, yet. You can continue to trade up. You know how that works. We men get more valuable as we get older and richer and more successful. And that's the truth. Uh, I mean, I listen to you every day, and, yeah, you know, even on this issue, you know, bringing it up, uh, you know, from a racial standpoint, uh -huh. it, it's 100% true. I think a lot of people are afraid to talk about this from a racial standpoint, but not me. I grew up in a black neighborhood. I grew up in the South Bronx. I know all about this. Amen. I, I mean, uh, I grew up in New York myself, so I've seen a lot of it. Uh, you know, I'm somewhat a product of that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that's the truth. Well, uh, you know, I look at my mom. She's a she's a uh, she was a big woman, and my dad was black. So uh, there you go. I'm living proof. Come on, you love to say it. <laughs> yeah, I do. Doesn't mean I gotta go. You know, doesn't mean I have to live my life in that same direction. So. Exactly. But uh, keep speaking the truth, Tom. Man, you right on, man. All right, well, thank you. All right, blow me up, Tom. Here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Gene on the Tom Like a Show. Hey Tom, what's going on? Uh, not much, Gene. This this is my opinion. I'll keep it short. Um, is there a market of uh, black men that want overweight white women? Yes, it is. Uh, especially here in uh, Washington State. Uh, I noticed that when I got stationed here, I'm from Chicago. Uh huh. All right. And when I left Chicago. I left with one thing on my mind, to do exactly the opposite of what my mom told me to do. Don't mess with a white woman, they nasty. Well, that's why I left. I want that skinny white girl that was a white girl. Not a white girl trying to be black and weigh 300 pounds. Not like those white chicks you see on the Ricky Lake show. No, Thank no. You. <laughs> All right. Uh, and the reason these black women complain here in Washington State, because they have big mouths. No one wants to hear that. Shut up. <laughs> you know, it would have helped if they learned how to give oral, too. 
<laughs> and I hope they're listening to this. Right, that's the cup. That's the true competition right there. When I say I want a white girl, I want a white girl. Uh huh. Right. I want some loud mouth woman. You know, talk smack to me like she on Ricky Lake, like you example just there. Uh huh. All right. Um, and as far as these guys getting these these white girls knocked up, you know, they're easy targets. Mm hmm. They're easy targets. Sure they o'clock in the morning, you can call them up and hit it, and hopefully nobody see you leaving. Now, exactly. That's the idea. You have to do it in cover of night. Thank you. I wish these guys would get that hint there. So I'm cool. I hope you have a good evening. Thank you, G. Take you too. Bong here, please. Here it comes. Right. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Let's say hi here to Charles on the Tom Like a Show. Tom, how you doing there? Okay, Charles. All right, let me tell you something real quick, okay? First of all, is I am 50 years old. Mm-hmm. And I am retired military. Mm-hmm. And I've lived all over the world. And I have put, and I'm going to tell you, when I was 18, 19 years old, I would date them good looking like Heather Locklear. And I was in Germany. I lost my virginity when I was 16. And she was 32. Oh, uh, yeah? In Germany? I was in Germany. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. I love it. Now, I spent 22 years in the Army, been to Australia. I've done all of it, all right? If anybody says a dog, I'm a bow wow, 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 wow. <laughs> right? I'm not going to lie about it. I put moms and daughters both. I, love I have it. no shame to my game. <laughs> I love it. I'm sorry. You know, I mean, I have it. And to have six figures, a man don't have to have six figures. If he got rap and he got game, he can get anything he wants. Well, that's what we teach at 101, of course. You know the deal there. You know, my daddy taught all of us. He got, I ain't got six older brothers. Right? All you got to do is add game. Because any woman... If she's educated, she ain't got no street sense. If she gets educated, and you can get them draws. Excuse me for saying that. So uh, uh, that's my that's my theory on it, more than anything else. And I'm 50 years old. Everybody thinks I'm in my 30s. I'm in the gym, and I get plenty of poon tang, black, white, purple, and green. My my preferable color is I love my vanilla, but I done have me a little caramel. I've been to the Philippines, been to Thailand, been to all the places, and got my groove on. So, Love. Tom, take me out Kobe style. Uh, here you go, Charles. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Armor, you're on the Tom Like It Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you going? How you doing, man? Okay, Armor. All right. Me, uh, my situation is a little bit different. You see, um, I'm a Cadorian, but I look more Puerto Rican. Uh-huh. But actually, a lot of people, they confuse me. They think I'm Italian. Mm-hmm. And I live up here in the Bronx, near the Fordham Road area. So you know how it is around here. I, I not only know it, I lived in that area. My dad is from that area. So oh, Yeah, man. We love you, man. We miss you, and we wish you would be back here on the radio, man. Thank but you. for now, I got a, you know, K-O-T-K, you know? There we go. You know? But check it out. So... You know, since I'm here in the ghetto and everything, and, you know, I grew up ghetto, but I don't look ghetto. I look like a, you know, like an aguido, you know. As, you as, can, so, in other words, you can pass. Yeah, I can pass, definitely. Mm-hmm. You know, and my thing is, I like the dark-skinned chicks, mm-hmm. you know, and I love them. And, hey, I won't pass up a, a, a nice, you know, Italian chick, Irish chick. I don't care. But the ass is, is, is the situation at hand. They got to have something that, you know, I like to smack around, you know, something mm-hmm. that, you know, she won't get worn out, and she still wants to F and F and F mm-hmm. and F and just go at it. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh, I do. Love it, man, love it. Who doesn't? Yeah. Tom, yo, I love your show, man. I wish you I wish you were here on, you know, WNEW like you used to be, man. Well, I wish I was too, but what are you going to do, Armour? I know. Yo, can you take me out with a bong and a biatch? Sure I can. Here you go. Biatch! one 800 800 tom Easy. Our telephone number, Brian, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, what's going on? I'm doing a radio show here, Brian. I hear that, I hear that. I was just listening to your whole topic about black guys getting white women knocked up and then leaving them. Um, like I was just telling uh, your screener, A, I'm against the whole interracial thing, period. You're against it? Of course, yes. What? I'm against the whole interracial thing. Why is you know, that? I think, why? I yeah. mean... Look, you know, the kids, A, they're going to end up getting made fun of, you know, Oreo and all that other what, stuff. What, are you kidding me? Is anyone making fun of Halle Berry these days? Please. 
I mean, yeah, you got a point there. I don't know. I'm just, you know, I was just brought up that way. That, well, we do, but not for that reason. Yeah, um, true. But the second thing is, you know, simple fact is that a normal good-looking white girl, not these fat white trash things that you see on Ricky Lake, but a normal decent class white girl can't bring a black man home. They can't bring a black man home and say I'm marrying him. Well, they can if it, you know if he's Bryant Gumble or somebody who makes you know seven figures. They can. And that's yeah. that's the bottom line. Suddenly, it's it's uh, perfectly okay. Yeah, but how many black men are making seven figures? Well, a very few uh, by percentage. But take, let's take a look at famous black men who make good money, going back to the days of O.J. Simpson, Brian Gumble being a more current example. And there's there's a bunch of these guys, okay? Uh, basketball players. I mean, there's a bunch of them. True, true, but again, huh? I mean, the, even the ones, you know, that, that have money, they're getting bad reps these days. you got your Kobe Bryant and your R. Kelly making them look bad. You know, like I said... Well, R. Kelly, we're talking about guys who date women, please. <laughs> yeah, you got a point there. You got a point there. I mean, hey, like hang a, on a second here, Brian. Wait, 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 wait one second. Jason, what did you want to say to Brian? Well, it sounds like you have a, an idiot on the phone who's obviously uh, they're just very ignorant. And uh, I am a black man, and, you know, I've been dating your women ever since I can remember, and they've all been L.A. 9s and 10s. And, you know, I go home and I meet their parents. Uh, I've had to deal with the racism and all of that. But you know what? You just overcome it, and I think that you're very close-minded. Uh, this guy is a part of uh, probably time before now, and, uh, you know, he needs to get a clue. Hey, Jason. Jason. I'm listening. Hello? I'm listening. Okay, um, Jason, A, first of all, listen to how you, you, you speak. You know, you speak in a correct manner. You, you speak like a well-educated man who's probably making decent money. Um, you know, but A, I'm not closed-minded or ignorant. I just believe what I believe. You know, it has nothing to do with being racist or closed-minded or anything else. Um, but so if you have an educated and, black and man and an educated white woman, are they okay to get together? Sure. Any two educated people can get together. It doesn't, but the simple fact is, I'm just against interracial marriages. I'm against interracial relationships. You know, I just don't think that, I just don't think that, 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 that people should, you know, go that's, that's very marriage. sad. I'm, I'm probably 100% sure that you are not 100% Anglo. By no, the way, I, 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 here comes a, another interesting question. Uh, Tiger Woods is half and half. Correct. So, sure. so who should he date? Who should Tiger Woods date? Yeah. yeah who, who do you say he should date? He just got married to a blonde chick from Sweden. Need to find another mixed gal. Yep. <laughs> I mean, with the simple fact, and James, how many black and Thai LA chicks are out there? Yeah, you see. said you dated LA nines and tens. LA nines and tens since high school. Tell me what an LA nine or ten looks like. LA 9 or 10, white woman. You're talking about your Heather Locklear. You're talking about your uh, Demi Moore. I mean, let me tell you something. I've had absolutely no problem at all. As I'm sitting here, I've pulled over to take this call. Boy, it sounds to me like you take this all very seriously, Jason. Hey, thanks, guys, for the call. The Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas Show. Yeah, 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. We're talking about whether some black men have a caste system where um, you move up and down the line according to how much money you make, what kind of women you get or want to get. I mean, certainly, for men in general, there's a caste system. The more money you have, the hot of a chick. But I think for African-American males, I think it's a little more intricate than they Let's say hello here to uh, John on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom, this is John calling you from Portland. Hey, John. I beg to differ with your analysis. Okay. Although there is a caste system, it doesn't necessarily apply uh, to black men. All right, tell us about it. Well, my theory is that Caucasian women, they want to have a different flavor. And so you don't really need a lot of money. You just need to have game, like your caller said before. Yeah. And if you have confidence in yourself, then you can get any woman you want. 
Well, I believe that. We teach that on 101. I believe, I believe for any one night, that's true. But let's talk about people who hook up for a relationship. Dude, that's going to be different. It is different. Yeah. And that's why I believe many times you have this, this cash system for black men, according to how much money they make, the kinds of women they are seen with. Well, you're talking about potential marriage. Well, not even potential marriage, but like uh, the father of your children, for example. Like, uh, like the woman who called up, and we played the, the call of uh, Cindy, who was talking about all the, uh, the, the half-black, half-white kids born to white women in Seattle. Well, see, if they follow like it's 101, they would use the condom. So they're already violating the rules. Oh, by all means. Yeah. By all means. Hey, hey if they were following 101, they wouldn't be uh, banging a fat chick at all. That's true, but that's because they have low self-esteem. What well, low self-esteem, or uh, you know, for most guys on a, on a given night, like I always say, you know, we all. You ever been to the bathroom at like the Ritz Carlton of the Four Seasons? Absolutely beautiful, right? It's got uh, beautiful lighting in there, and there's a there's an attendant in there who hands you a towel. Yeah. If you're done washing your hands, it's it's it, it, you feel spoiled and pampered, and it's wonderful. But if you're not near the the men's room of the Four Seasons, you'll go to the mobile station. It's on a dark road, and nobody will see you going in and out, and it's filthy and disgusting. <laughs> as long as nobody sees you in there, it's not going to ruin your reputation. Well, we and that's kind of the way it is for men with women, okay? We all want to go to the Four Seasons, but every once in a while, I've been in the mobile station. I'm going to be honest with you. I've been there. I think we all have. And they don't clean that co toilet seat off it enough. I want to tell you right now. Well, see, that's you're talking more like... Just getting together, just hooking up instead of a relationship. And by all means. Those are different categories. But, I, but what I'm saying is, if you're certain, just like we talk about getting hotter chicks the more money you make or the more money they think you make or whatever, it's the same thing uh, when we're talking about income levels, but we, we've gotten specific uh, about race here. And, and when, we have, when we talk about, like, why do so many black guys like getting with fat white chicks? There's got to be an explanation for that. That's what I just told you. It's, it's the lack of confidence and low self-esteem for black guys because they really can get any woman they wanted, but they don't really realize that. Mm -hmm. well, I think any man can get any woman he wants with the right set of lies, with the right game. At least for one night, you can get any woman out there. If you bring it right in the bedroom, you can have her. For more you you got to get night. in the bedroom first. Well, you you preach that every day. That's right. right. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. All right, John. Thank you. Right, blow me up, Doc. Here you go. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Jonathan on the Tom Like It Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing, man? Okay, Jonathan. I got the perfect theory for you. The reason why you're... Okay, first of all, you're wrong. About Check what? African-American men... Once they exceed a certain level, the reason why a lot of them end up hooking up with white women is merely because there's more white women than black men, men, or women where they tend to be. You take an African-American man, he comes from, you know, Harlem or whatever, gets a great education. He moves into an area where there's not that many black women. All of his corporate uh, parties are white, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what you have. You know, I mean, you have more white women than black women available, so you're going to choose from what you have available to you, and that's what's available. That's all there is to it. Well, there's certainly probably some truth in that, but uh, you don't think also that there is a class? I'm not saying it's every single person. You don't think there's a class of black men who think of themselves as, you know, when they're uh, upwardly mobile and making money and getting better gigs and stuff? You don't think there's a class of black men who want white women? That, that to them, that's that's like buying a, a BMW or a Ferrari. Oh, not at all. Not with that mindset. I would say there might be a small minority, but the majority of black men who are successful, they trade up because that's what's available. You know what I mean? The only black woman they see is when they go home or to a family reunion, and you can't have family. You know what I'm saying? So that's all you have available to you. I mean. And of course, everybody wants a little difference, a little change every once in a while. But generally, I would say the reason why most successful black men date white women is because that's what's available in that upper echelon. I understand. Uh, Jonathan, thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Shamara, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. Um, I am a black 
beautiful professional woman. Uh huh. And yes, I do date a six-figure white man. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm just disgusted that you would even say that the top of the totem pole would be a blonde white female. Well, I just I just look at the O.J. Simpsons and the Bryant Gumbles of the world, and I, I see what I see. Yeah, but I mean, it just there are other black men in America besides football stars and. Um, I don't know. And Hollywood. I'm just talking about high, like high you know, income I'm individuals. I'm not talking about uh, necessarily just sports stars. No, I just, I just, I just feel like you are, you're not giving black women a good name, and and you and you just let that. Oh well, don't misunderstand. I, you see, you see, in my single life, I have dated countless beautiful black women, and uh, that was certainly uh, one of my uh, favorite uh, areas, no doubt about it. I, 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 in no way am I putting them down. In fact. I am truly amazed that there are some guys who, when black, would say, well, what, really what I want is a white chick. I'm amazed at that. That just shows that you have love. What's that? I lost you. I hate when that happens. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Let's go. Step it up. The Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas like a show at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That is our telephone number. Spencer on the Tom Likas a show. Hello. Hello. Yeah, uh, I was just uh, just sitting there listening to the talk, you know, just to you with your conversation and what I had to say is that I'm a successful black man. I'm no football star, no basketball star, nothing like that, but. From what I from what I see is that when you're dealing with a successful black woman, she says to bring too much to the table. Mm hmm Women, no matter what color they are, they all want us to make more than they do, no matter how much they make. Exactly, exactly. See, so, but when you're dealing with the woman, a, a, a Caucasian woman, she tends to don't don't give you, you know, she she she's there, she she's there more for, you know, what I'm saying, you get more support. And, and and she just does what you say. That's what I like about white women. They do what I say. They do what you say. And black women, what do you tell me? They mouth off at you? Oh, they got too much mouth sometimes, especially the success. You know, the ones that's, that's really doing their thing. This is. I, I mean, I love black women. Let me put that out. I love them to death, but sometimes they they do too much. That's all that is. You just want them to shut up. I mean, so much. Is it you? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right, Spencer, thank you. All right. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. Lola on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Lola. How are you? Do you care? Actually, yes, I do. I'm doing great. That's wonderful. Uh, the guy you just had on, mm -hmm. that's the type of guy I would never date. I'm black. I'm cute. I am very intelligent. And on top of that, I'm not American. And I've been here for about 10 years. Where are you from? I'm from Africa. Uh-huh. And I've been living in L.A. for about two years now. And I'm really disgusted about how superficial people are. And on top of that, when I was living on the East Coast, I realized that there's a lot more successful black women than black men simply because they're less intimidating in the corporate world. So when guys call and say they're in the wrong circles and they're not meeting blah, 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 that's BS. I mean, it's true. White women are more docile. So if that's what you want, fine. I like everything. So I will do anything as long as they treat me good and they don't listen to your show because I love your show. You'll do anything with anyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're my kind of girl, Lola. Thank you. All right. All right. There Bye. she goes. Bye. one 800 tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Bob on the Tom Likas show. How you doing, Tom? Hi, Bob. I agree with a lot of what you're saying, and I do think the demographics is true with regards to uh, the dating and uh, the amount of money that people make uh, is what they could get. But with the particular interest in this issue, I do believe that it is wrong. Interracial dating is wrong. Why? In America, anyway. I mean, maybe not from... Uh, South Africa or somewhere, but uh, in, in America, because of the uh, cultural issues that we've faced over the years and the uh, political issues and uh, 
uh, the cultural issues especially. I mean, and uh, so... Well, those issues would go away if we all inter uh, intermarried and uh, created the interracial kids. Those problems would uh, be eliminated. Well, I don't... Yeah, but that's... I mean, you're asking for a lot. You're asking for a lot of... Uh, um, a lot of healing to go on in, in both directions. I think that, you know, for black uh, men, you know, white women can be perceived as a trophy uh, in some cases to align themselves with kind of like uh, fixing the, uh, the sta you know, I guess the discrepancy that's existed for over the, over the years, you know, economically. Mm -hmm. And the successful men, you know, black men, when they, uh, I think that they're beautiful black women as well, and I think they would do better uh, finding a, somebody of their own race because of cultural reasons and, uh, you know, topical reasons, political reasons, uh, religious beliefs, just on, on down the line. But with, uh, I mean, I think it was an interesting thought that you had regarding, you know, the big booty. When you watch uh, MTV and you see all of the rap shows and things like that, they always show black women with large derrieres, uh, much larger than white women have. And I think that's just particularly a cultural issue. Well, uh, you go to Seattle if you want to see uh, women, uh, white women with big booties. <laughs> that's what I hear. I don't know if I'm ready to travel up there very soon. Trust me when I tell you. Tom Rogers. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I got a question for you, man. My girlfriend found my porn collection, and she's kind of mad at me. She thinks that masturbation is just like cheating. How old are you? I'm 18. At 18, masturbation is not only a birthright, it's a necessity. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to AC on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, AC. I mean, hey, Tom, what's up? Not much, AC. Hey, I'm in the Enum Claw, man. I don't live here, but I'm on my way to a job, man. Hey, I got a couple of things to say about the situation, though. Mm -hmm. About what's going on. With this. I, I live in Washington State. I'm from Seattle, from the south end of Seattle, off of Rainier. I'm sure you might be a little familiar with that I'm area. I'm very familiar with it. Okay, okay. I think it's a uh, plain and simple culture. Two uh, times here. Oh, uh, damn. I got it with about three or four generations deep within. All right, we're, we're losing you, so we're going to try to get a better connection to get you back on the air. Melissa, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Melissa. Hi, love you. Thank you. Don't disagree. I disagree today, though. All right, tell me why. I live in L.A., yeah. and I'm starting to see something different. You're talking about an older generation, a different segment, or maybe some athletes. Older generation, maybe some athletes who still have the plantation mentality where they think the ultimate is a white woman. Yeah. But here in L.A., I'm starting to see something different. I'm starting to see black men treat white women how white women used to treat black women, where they mess around with them on the side, but they marry black women. Really? They, they have the black women as their upfront men. Yeah, I work in, in entertainment, business management, and most of my black clients, and, you know, they're, they're kind of wild. They can be kind of wild, but they're uh -huh. wild with the white women. But most of their girlfriends and wives are black. You look at the young singers, the young entertainers, mm -hmm. the young rappers, they all have black women. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I'm going to keep my eyes open. You know, I live here in L.A. I know. I'm right here. I but, listen to you every day. You know, I've been living here for 16 years, so I'll Check have to keep, out. I'm going to keep my eyes open. Check out the younger guy. The younger Check guy. Out the younger black guy. All right. <laughs> all right. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. All right, Melissa. Bye. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. Aisha, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? Do you care, Aisha? Of course I do, Tom. I'm doing great. That's awesome. I was just calling because I interracially date. I'm an African-American woman, and I'm 25 years old, uh -huh. and I'm a California nine. Really? I, I think that it's fantastic. I don't think that it's like a caste system. I think it's just something that you grow up, you've grown up with, and you're taught. Uh -huh. like, I was taught by my mother that I should, once I get established, to date only like white men. Really? Really? <laughs> definitely. Wow. Even my aunt does that. She's married to a psychiatrist who is Jewish, and he makes like at least a hundred and seventy thousand dollars a year. Wow! 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 There you go. Is his name Cy? No, it's Schlechter. Oh, I... 
Psychiatrist, yes. <laughs> exactly. He's a Jew. He's a Jew. Yeah. Very nice. So uh, your mom kind of trained you for this. Exactly. And uh, so uh, the white men you date, what do they do for a living? What kind of what kind of professions are they in? Um, most of them are like professors or doctors. Uh huh. See, if you're a California nine, men don't care what color you are. <laughs> Believe me. Uh, do you think true. there's a man on earth who wouldn't go out with Naomi Campbell? Please. Maybe. Oh, well, I I haven't met one yet. You got to be kidding. No, definitely. Yeah. I mean, they might not go out with Star Jones, but who wants to go out with Star Jones, for God's sake? <laughs> My God. Unbelievable. Aisha, thank you so much. Appreciate the call. All right. You know our email address. It's my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Or you can call our comment line. The number is area code 310 8 -4